Good morning, good morning, good morning, world, uh, and welcome to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Um, well, we are back uh, after a seven-week hiatus. Um, this annoys uh, Ian and Jamar, but we are back now uh, in 11 out of 12 weeks in a row. Uh, yes, we are back like a shark attack, back like we left some, back like we ain't got no clothes in our back, and for the world is a better place when the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast when the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast is taking place. So y'all, thank you for tuning in with us this morning as we conversate about the latest sports topic that has taken place from this past week and will be upcoming this week. It's always a blast to have you all tune in and to participate with us every weekend. As a reminder that every week, we always like to begin our podcast by reminding our audience that the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast can be found on Facebook via the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast community page, on Spotify as the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, as well as our own Facebook pages via Brandon Price, Jamar Goodman, and People Hernandez. Uh, today is October 8th of 2022. We have yet again seen another fascinating week in the sports world, where we saw Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos arguably look worse than the Chicago Bears offense. And that is indeed saying a lot. On the other hand, we have additionally seen the MLB playoffs get underway in which wild card games have begun and soon a World Series champion will be crowned. And lastly, uh, we saw via the media and now in live action, thanks to a leaked video source called TMZ and I became aware of through my brother, Peoples Hernandez, Draymond Green put them hands on Jordan Poole. And so with that being said, introducing our guest for this morning, Mr. Jonathan Abernathy, who was checking in with us live on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast for a second week in a row. Thank you again, my brother, for joining us this morning on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. It is indeed a pleasure to have you. Uh, how are you this morning, bro? I'm doing well, and I appreciate you guys for having me back on. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for joining us, man. And additionally, introducing my brother from another mother. Here on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, Mr. Ian Jones, a.k.a. People's Hernandez. Mr. Ian Jones, my bro, what it do? How y'all doing? How y'all doing this morning? Doing well, doing well. So, uh, with that being said, fellas, let's get right into it. Uh, let's begin our podcast this morning with some drama. So, Draymond Green, uh, he KO'd uh, Jordan Poole during the team practice session on Wednesday morning. Um, and so the video has been leaked thanks to TMZ. And so we have, um, if you haven't, you can pretty much just go to the internet to see uh, what happened. And it uh, was, um, it just posted a lot of reactions from people. Um, and so just curious, fellas. Um, and in this morning, bro, you got the lay it, you got the lead. And then mm -hmm. Jonathan, you follow up and then I'll chime in as well. And so just curious, guys, what are you guys thoughts on this situation? And where do the Warriors go from here? And additionally, will things ever be the same going forward now between Jordan Poole and Draymond Green? And so, Ian, your thoughts, bro? Um, this is a tough situation. So, originally, when this news came out, they made it seem like, you know, oh, they just got into, you know, like, scuffle and make, you know, Draymond hit them, you know, like a couple of love taps and you know that was it right you know, and the video leaks what yesterday morning and yeah. he's like trying to take his head off like he's somebody on the street like he don't know him at all right. so um you know granted you know being you know being at being a former athlete being on teams you know fights happen you're around each other right. every day a lot of men around you know you get tired of people and you know yeah. um it's a, it's a natural thing. We're all humans. We get irritated. Um, so things like that happen. And for people that don't know, things like that happen in practice all the time. But my main focus was, you know, on, um, like, how did this leak? You know, how did this get out? That's, it was very, it was very shocking. And, you know, the, you know, that makes it, that makes it even tougher for the team to, you know, to kind of get past it. You know, they already have to get past it as a team, you know, behind closed doors. You know, now the whole world knows, you know, the jokes are going to come. I mean, they came yesterday. And, I mean, they were hilarious. Don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just like, you know, we didn't – we some things we don't need to see. 
And I think that's a big problem with social media today. You know, you know, a lot of things we don't need to see. You know, it was said that, you know, back in the day, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, he hit um, Steve Kerr. In the day. Yeah. So probably in a similar situation, you know, we didn't see that. You know, they went on to go 72 and 10 and win the championship after that. So um, it's tough. It's a tough situation. And I don't think it's a tough situation for them to get through period but now it's like you know now it's in the media the video is out everybody can see it so now it's basically like you know will they ever be the same or you know will Draymond be back next year and it kind of putting the pressure on the Warriors to be like you know probably to like even you know discipline him more than they probably would have because now it's like well he needs to be suspended the videos <laughs> out right right yeah because now everybody knows everybody sees so it's a tough situation, uh, you know, ultimately it's up to those two fellas in the team that, you know, make things right with me personally. Um, if you swing at me like that, you know. Right. That's that's like my that's thing, pretty, man. Yeah, that, that's pretty tough to come back from. And, you know, now that everybody's seen the video, which is, that's so, that's so unfortunate. You know, now everywhere Jordan Poole go, you know, it's going to come up. They could be in the middle of a game. You know, he get into it with another uh, another player from an opposing team. I think I'm like, well, you, you didn't swing on Draymond Green like that. So, you know, that's going to be a thing. Hell, he can even go home to his girlfriend. His girlfriend might not even see it or whatever. And they were like, she get mad. You didn't do that to Draymond Green. So it's, it's going to be a right. thing for a while. <laughs> it's going to be a thing for a while. <laughs> you got to replay that next week, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, man. So it's like, that's so unfortunate because they probably could have got past it, you know, quicker without nobody seeing it. And that's, as far as the video department goes, somebody got to get fired or if nobody tells the whole department. They got to get fired because there's no way that should have leaked out into the media. That's like truly unacceptable. Let me ask you this, uh, Ann and Jonathan. Like, do y'all think that the dude or the whoever, whoever did that in the organization did that on purpose? They did that on purpose to make Draymond Green look bad. Yeah, for sure. I think they did it on purpose to make him. It's either... They want him somebody gone probably from the organization, probably. Yeah, they somebody probably want him gone. Yeah, somebody from the organization that's kind of fed up with Draymond Green, or somebody got a pretty hefty paycheck and was willing to uh, lose their job for that. Right, exactly. That's facts, I don't, bro. That's facts. That's facts. I don't they do think get paid they for that. Did it to make him look bad because I mean you couldn't have timed that. I mean, yeah, they were going back and forth and everything at the start of the video, but you couldn't have timed catching that exact moment. Yeah. So I don't think it was a moment of trying to make Draymond look bad. I think it was they caught an unexpected moment that they knew, knew would sell right. and make them some money. So that's why the video got leaked. Right. But I don't think it was a moment to make Draymond look bad. I mean, he does look very bad in that video. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, like Ian said earlier, like, People fight. Yeah. Teams fight, family fights. Normally, it's all it's all in the same thing. And as I was stating earlier, like it's gonna matter on how they communicate on the court now to see how they yeah. get through this, get past this. Like I said, if it's going bad halfway through the season, Draymond's probably gone, and they're gonna have the money to give to Jordan Poole to keep him. Yeah, because Jordan Poole does put up points. Let's be honest here, right, And Draymond Green, he just getting people facing all that. But, you know, like, let's just take, for example, um, Draymond Green, right, when uh, Tristan Thompson came in his face, he didn't do nothing to Tristan Thompson. I guess maybe because Tristan yeah. Thompson was bigger than him. But I just want to <laughs> see Draymond do this to somebody, you know, like, the Pick people that his can I want to see him do that in to a Zach Randolph, you know, somebody that's going to beat his ass. Like, I want to see him, I want to see him do that to somebody like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it either, yeah, I mean, even Jordan with, Poole, man. Right, even with Draymond, it's going to be like, come on, bro, you, you, you stole off of the, you know, the young kid, man. Come on, pick up somebody your own size type thing. So that video leaking was probably like the worst, the worst thing that could happen to them right now. Especially in preseason, you know, they're trying to get the chemistry back right for, you know, 
another championship run, and, you know, now this. So now every time, you know, they miscommunicate on the court, you know, oh, they're going to go back and fight again, you know. So it's just going to be a thing. Like, even with – this is almost up there with the Draymond Green and KD situation when he so-called called him the B-word. Right. This is kind of almost even worse. So it's like, how do they come back from that? As the Warriors back then, they couldn't come back from that. You know, KD ended up leaving. You know, they end up – all of them end up getting – they got to the finals, but, you know, people end up getting hurt and things like that. But right. it's – I don't know. It's now – I mean, it's probably going to be tough to come back from in the, in the beginning, but it's, it's really going to be tough now now that it's in the media. You know, it'll – It'll fizzle out. Something else will happen, or something else will go viral. But with that team, it it might not never be the same. I don't know. It's up to those guys. Right, right, right. And so, Jonathan, um, um, you, uh, sorry for cutting you off, but with right the here. Warriors, um, you you feel that it's a possibility for things to be the same, but it depends on how to. What what does it depend on, bro? Like, does it depend on? Draymond Green and Jordan Poole alone and how they right now know. it's going to depend on Steve Kerr, Steph Curry, Draymond and Jordan. Cause Steph's the obvious leader of the team. That's been no doubt for years. Right. Steve is a hell of a coach. He he's a hell of a coach to that team. Right. You put and, him on any other team, he, he may not do the same. to get hidden in the mouth and practice too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, it just all depends on how they recover from it. Like I said, it can go one of two ways. It can either go good or go bad for them. They can grow stronger from this, or they can completely fall apart when those two are on the court together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, then it goes down to coaching, and it goes down to Steph taking leadership over it all. Yeah, I hear you, bro. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, um, I'm like Ozzy Faison though. Uh, in uh, on paid in full. Remember when he had on that black tank top and he showed up to the basketball court with that little cap gun? Like in yeah. his <laughs> Yeah. It's, I'm just man. wondering if that's gonna be uh Jordan Poole at the Warriors practice every day. Like soon some pop off next time. Like Right. It's it's that's a, that's a tough thing to come back from. Then you, you know, probably embarrassed. Everybody oh, very, very yeah. Everybody goes now. People gonna be talking about that. I'm like, oh, they go Jordan Poole. They go Jordan Poole, and like, you know, somebody gonna say something. Like, Where's Draymond Green at? Draymond Green gonna get you. You know, it's just. That's, I can only imagine the trash talking. Look at Glass Jaw. Right. Exactly, like he grabbing food from the food court, and somebody just scream out, Draymond, and he get nervous and stuff and drop his food. <laughs> like. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> Is is that is so unfortunate? And that was my first reaction. I'm like, now who would leak this video, man? Like, come on, guys, we gotta be better, man. <laughs> man, I like, got paid for leaking that video, though. Yeah, that's that would be my only thing. You know, that's the only thing. Either somebody didn't like Draymond, and maybe you know, like that's why we gonna leak this video. Or, right. like you said, somebody got paid. They had to get paid. Like, well, I'll lose my job over this. I had to get paid. Right, for real. There's TMZ no, offered them a bag. Yeah, there's no way that tape should be leaked. Like, how can a practice tape be leaked of a fight? You know how many fights it is? NFL fights? Um, I'm imagining hockey fights, you know, basketball fights during practice. I mean, baseball, you know. Who, like, who, who really, who, who leaked that, man? Somebody got paid, and that was an inside job. If I'm the Warriors, if that one specific person don't tell me, everybody in the video department get fired. Right, right. Yeah, this is um, this is a uh, very, very, and, and and it's just for me, y'all. It's the media of today. Like with this media oh, yeah. age today, like this stuff gets put out there. So like, you got to be super mindful in of this stuff because. Now it's put out there and it's it's not ever going anywhere. Um, no, people gonna no. see this. This affects brands now, this affects publishing deal, this affects all type of stuff. Like it 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 just has a whirlwind in so many different directions. And it it just really Draymond, Draymond, Draymond. I just want you to see, I want to see you do that to somebody big. I want to see you do that to Tristan Thompson. Or, Zach Randolph, you know what I'm saying? I want to see you do that to somebody that 
um, is known to put them hands, you know, like, look, Jordan Poole, like, Jordan Poole literally in is probably a little bit bigger than us, you know, Jonathan, like, he's a little bit bigger than us, we ain't the biggest yeah. guys, in the world. you yeah. know, like, five, nine, five, Jordan Poole, probably six, two, six, three, like, he's a little guy for NBA, he, he, he undersized, actually, skinny, no weight on him, you know, like, yeah, Draymond be trying to just, he push stuff with the right people and then try to make it look like he this real tough guy. And I just don't really believe it like that because if yeah. he was really that tough, I feel like he'd really be sending it up with real niggas in the streets. Like real niggas, you know that? I mean, would go even at that same case, look what he did with LeBron. Yeah. yeah. LeBron's I mean, a good LeBron guy. Got mad. LeBron got mad and he backed off quick. T- tried to play the victim role. Right, that was in the, that was in the finals. Yeah, that was in the finals. Yeah, he was he was kicking, he was kicking everybody in the nuts that year. I'm like, come on, yeah. Y'all. He he kicked everybody in the nuts from the, the started basketball season all the way to the finals. It was it was it was mm-hmm. ridiculous. It was yeah, ridiculous. Uh, against the Celtics, man, I was watching them <laughs> kick Jalen Brown in the nuts, and Jalen Brown was finna get into it with him, and you know he walked away, but he he definitely antagonized. Us. Yeah, that's and, and, and oh yeah. Just quickly, y'all, and that's a really good point, Dan and Jonathan. Do you think that he was doing that to antagonize him? Because maybe Jordan Poole, one thing I noticed about him, and y'all could kind of see this in the finals, he was kind of getting really lackadaisical and comfortable. You know, like really lackadaisical, not taking stuff serious, kind of yeah. joking around. And I think Draymond maybe did that to send a message to him, like, hey, we won a championship and stuff, but bro, like you need to get focused. And so in order for me to get you back focused, I'm going to steal off you publicly in front of everybody um, to let you know that we mean business and we're trying to get another ring. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it I mean, could yeah, be the situation. Possible. Yeah, that's possible. My thing is, too, um, I was like, well, what what did jo- what could have Jordan Poole have actually said, you know, to make him react like that? You know, it's, it's one thing, you know, to push somebody or, you know, he could have just choked them, grabbed them or something. But him to find him to react like that, like he just like trying to take his head off, like he was somebody on the street, you know. Like they don't know each other, like they, you know, these guys see each other every day, you know. I basically see you guys more than I see my family. So y'all guys are kind of like family now. So for him to react that way, this had to be a a thing that's been brewing for a long time and just kind of probably just overflow. Right, so Jonathan, uh, tell me what uh, uh, Jordan Poole said to Draymond Green. What did he say? Oh, man. He said he's about to get paid. He's about to make more money than Draymond. <laughs> he said he's putting up better numbers than any, than half the team, actually. Right, and so he said that out loud during the practice. Yep, and he said it to Draymond. That's why you broke, and you're not about to get that max contract. And that pays Draymond <laughs> off more than anything. <laughs> But you can imagine being in the heat of that moment, that probably would piss Draymond off. I can so see why. <laughs> He's probably yeah. like, that's why you just airballed. I ain't never airballed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Yeah, and as you can see, this would probably tick him off, man. <laughs> and so Jamar Dillon commented, it's very unfortunate, but Draymond got a chill. Jordan Poole had to say some foul though, I'm thinking. Yeah, he probably did, man. He probably had to say some foul uh, running off at the mouth, Jamar, for sure. And so that, you know, probably take Draymond off. Um, and that's the thing, and us being there, we don't know what was said being in that, you know, that practice, but probably was something like that, you know. Prescott JB, y'all, good morning, Prescott JB. He stated, I don't care if Draymond was literally Goliath himself. I got to fight that man the next chance I get can't go out like that and so Prescott JB stated you know and and not, but Prescott JB I don't know if he Draymond Green by the way y'all just Prescott JB me and Ann know him uh, Jonathan this is our former lineman in uh, high school big dude he got brothers that have played in the NFL he's a big dude all the Bryants huge guys so I don't know if um Prescott JB he was still off you uh but you know because the way he looked, he looked like he just like still on people that's just easy to still on. And so, um, yeah, I feel you though. Um, this is how people feel. People feel like, hey, it's it's up from here. Every time I see you, it's up from here. And then some people like, you know, Jonathan, like, hey, we got to win the championship. You know, like, 
Um, and 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 Jamar Goodman, um, he stated called him a triple single. I don't know what that means, uh, Ian and uh, Jonathan. You know what that means? Jamar, explain what a triple single. What's that? He's not gonna. Well, a double double is ten points, ten assists, yeah. ten rebounds. Oh. He's not getting ten of anything. Yeah, Trey, Trey, my, you know, you know, if for you know decent game, he might nine points, eight rebounds, and maybe seven assists or something like that. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. And then uh, Prescott JB stated that, uh, and good morning, Mitch. Um, he stated Draymond wouldn't dare pull a stunt like that on someone like Ben Wallace, Charles Barkley, or Shaq. He definitely wouldn't pull that on Shaq or Ben Wallace, for sure. No, not at all. But if he would have pulled it on Shaq, I would have loved to watch that, though. That would have been funny. What y'all think? It would have been slap boxing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It probably would have been falling into the stands. A lot of people say though Charles Barkley had them hands. This is interesting. Um, I couldn't see it with Charles Barkley. I don't know. Um, y'all think Charles? You think Charles Barkley had them hands in? Uh, he he probably did. You know, I think every time he fought, <laughs> I think um, you know, he was missing. Like I know he fought Shaq. <laughs> threw the basketball at him and he swung at him. I think he fought somebody else back then and like swung get missed. You know, it's it's tough with the with the NBA fights, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past him. Now, you know, he he old, he's an older guy and he got bigger, but back in the day, no, nah, he, he probably did. Right, right. Um, so the comments, and uh remember, and you'd always uh if you go on live, you can help me with these comments too, bro. Yeah. He stated, Victor Young stated, Charles Slam Shack. Damn, I ain't know that. Um, I got to take a look at that video. Um, yep. But he said he star, he, 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 he Slam Shack. That's a big dude. Um, and then um, Jamar Goodman stated, Tristan Thompson punked Draymond in the club a few years ago. Oh, in the club. Oh. So it went on the basketball court, Jamar? This was another place, too? Um, this see Jamar always got the scoop on stuff. Um, it happened on the court too, though. Right, during he the, during on the, the finals. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, the finals. Yeah, it was like game two. That's why Tristan was suspended that game. Right, right. Yeah, he basically threw a basketball in his face. Right. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jamar Goodman stated Barkley would have folded Draymond up. Mm. Well, that means Barkley ain't, ain't, ain't a soft then. Okay. And so, thank y'all. This breaks this down. Is this why um, we saw y'all in the early morning sports talk podcast for an ADHD moment? Um, but is this why Charles Barkley and Shaq is always intuitive on TNT? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> See, the thing, the thing about that is, um, uh, Charles Charles knows how to get under Shaq's skin. He and, and it's always he just playing, but then you know when Shaq gets serious, it's always about Google me, Chuck. How right. many rings do I got, Chuck? Google me. So he know how he know how to get up under his skin. It, it, it's, it's hilarious. It makes for like one of the, the best shows on, on TV. It, it's hilarious. It definitely is. And so that's where this come from, then, Jonathan. I always thought like Shaq just picking on people because you know, like he just pick on people. Like he a big guy, he just pick on people. And ET Shaq, I mean Chuck, because Chuck ain't got no rings, you know. And he always reminded him of that at the worst times. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the first argument he bring up. Google me, Chuck. Google me. But if you talking about championships, that's the first thing you want to bring up. I'll be like, Shaq, we ain't talking about championships right now, my boy. <laughs> right. Right. Man. Okay. This is see, I'm learning, man. I swear I never knew this. Um talking about fighting, and it's always championships that get brought up. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Every time, every time. It never fails. And so y'all, Jamar Gummy, he stated uh correct. LeBron was there, and it was in L.A. LA. So this happened in L.A. Um, word. Okay. Um, I never knew this. Uh, but, yeah, interesting. Um, and then uh, Victor Young stated, Barkley outbanked Shaq to LOL. I mean, I know that ain't fighting, but he's stronger. Oh, wow. So he outbanked Shaq? Really? 
Yeah. He, he was pretty, pretty strong back then. He didn't, you know, he was one of those guys. He didn't really look like it, but he probably was just like, like naturally strong. Yeah, so he, he was pretty strong back then. Even strong. Yeah, to especially to challenge a, a big dude like Shaq, you know, he's... You know, yeah, but that was young Shaq, though. Yeah. That was real young Shaq, like two or three years into the league, Shaq. Mm-hmm. Still big as hell, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you, you the, the basically more, said that ain't the, Shaq. <laughs> Right, right. But you basically said that ain't the 2000 Lakers Shaq or the 2003 Shaq yeah. or the big cactus Shaq. They got, but they got into it around that time too. Later on in um, in Barkley's career, because he was in Houston, they got into it. Then they always showed a clip where I think Shaq swung and missed, and then uh, Barkley threw the basketball. I think he hit him in the head, and they just started wrestling. So yeah, they they they've been into it a couple times. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um. Yeah, y'all. This is uh very interesting. Um. Learning some um, in regards to Shaq and uh, Charles Barkley. We sorry, y'all. This is an ADHD moment, but um, <laughs> it kind of relates to uh, Draymond Green and what uh, happened with him and Jordan Poole. And so going forward, man, we'll see how this team uh, reacts. It's just, you know, um, a low life on uh, the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast page, a low life going to post. Um, a video or a picture of um, Ozzy Faison with a black jersey going to a basketball game uh, with a gun. Um, and so they basically, that low life, um, it's kind of hidden on that this will be the Warriors practice going forward. And so um, right. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Right. We'll see how that goes, man. So um, very tough times, but um, it's, it's sports like Angel and say. All right, uh, world, if y'all want to continue to rock with us, please, man, because it's a lot of sports going on outside of uh, the Draymond Green drama. And so uh, it's the MLB playoffs, y'all. And so yep. Jonathan Abernathy, man, is an avid baseball fan. Um, there are wild card matchups going on. And so um, we will um, do picks and we will just answer a few questions. And so first and foremost, um, I want to know, fellas, your picks uh for these series and so uh we got the six uh tampa bay rays at the three cleveland guardians and so jonathan i want you to wing us off and you chime in and then i chime in and so um and we're gonna eventually pick a uh a, we won't pick the world series champion yet but we'll at least make these picks and talk about a few questions so the tampa bay rays at the cleveland guardians um, Jonathan, man, who you got and why? School us on this baseball stuff. Well, I said from the beginning of the season that the Guardians were going to be a sleeper team. Sure did. And I believe the Guardians are going to win this series just because their lineup itself is just more in-depth. The Rays, honestly, out of all the teams offensively in the playoffs right now, I think the Rays are the worst team. They're the most incomplete. They're inconsistent next to the Yankees offense. But, I mean, the Rays just don't have what it takes to make it past the Guardians, I don't believe. I think all four of these series are going to go three games, but I think the Guardians will pull this one out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And who you got, bro? Um, I got the Guardians as well. Um, you know, in baseball. It's we always say this. It's kind of like you know who gets hot at a certain you know certain uh, point in time. Back. So uh, I feel like they've been in a better position than the Rays. So I gotta they've go. been hot as hell, Cleveland, and they have been scorching hot lately. Scorching. Yeah, they swept the White Sox. <laughs> <laughs> but on yeah. top of that, I mean, on top of that, um, world just an FYI. Me and Jamar, we, we cover baseball with the Sox every Saturday. And so we have known literally, in that that division race, Jonathan, was close as hell. And it, it even got to the point to where when Tony La Russa left, we got excited because we like, we got a manager now that nobody knows what he's going to do. Um, and we only a game out. We was getting a lot hot. And then we looked up, bro, a week later. 
And the Sox ass was about five, six games out. And then we look up another week later, they was about 12 games out. And yeah. that just literally shows testament to how hot the Cleveland Guardians have been. And Seven so, games. yeah, they have been scorching hot world. And so, Jonathan, you are dead on with this Cleveland Guardians thing. They are dangerous. Um, now, um, they have taken a 1-0 lead. And so they are up on the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And so I'm with you guys. Cleveland looks dangerous. Um, all right, y'all, the Philadelphia Phillies at Albert Pujols and his St. Louis Cardinals. The Phillies are up 1-0. And so um, Philly, they stated uh, going into the playoffs, uh, Ian and Jonathan, that they feel like we got it all. We're not afraid of no team. Um, we coming from an NL East, very competitive division with the Braves, very competitive division with the Mets. Um, and, and, and Bryce Howard is just cocky, as y'all know. And so he, he basically saying we ain't running from no smoke at all. And so they put the smoke on St. Louis yesterday. And so they up 1-0. And so if they win one more game, they advance to the uh, first round. And so, um, Jonathan, who you got with this series? Um, it, it's tough because I'm a diehard Cubs fan. And I hate saying that I want to see the Cardinals do good simply because pool holes in Yachty's last year. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> and yeah. I hate to say it, but I do. But the Phillies' main rally starter right now is back, and that's Nick Castellanos. He's always been a second-half player. Mm -hmm. And he's back, and he's hot right now. In yep. him motivating players like Kyle Schwarber, who's proven in the playoffs what he can do, even if it was just the World Series that he played that year. He always Kyle's steps up in the big moments. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you have Kyle and Nick Castellanos sitting there rallying people. And then Bryce Harper's looking for that ring because the Na he doesn't have one. The Nationals won it the year after he left. Yeah, after he left. So now – Honestly, I'm taking the Phillies in this one. As yeah. much as I want to see pull holes do great in the playoffs, I'm taking the Phillies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I like Phillies youth, and I think St. Louis is old. But go ahead, Ann. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with you guys. It's it's tough to say, you know, being from Chicago, you say you want, you know, you want to see the Cardinals do good, but you know, just as a sports fan, as a baseball fan, you want to see. You want to see Pujols go out kind of right. You know, he's had a, a pretty good year with uh, – he's getting up there. Well, he's a 700 club, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's 700 club. 703, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's been it's been pretty dope to see that. At, you know, at one point, I didn't even know he was that far. And I was like, wow, he's in the 700 club. I'm like, man, he's been playing for a while now. He was so, at like uh, 680 at the All-Star break, and he hit – I think it was like 15 in September alone. Yeah, yep, yeah. He, 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 he yeah, been on it. Yeah. Yeah, he been on the street. Um, so you know, you want to see guys like that go out well, but you know, me being from Chicago, you know, being a Cubs fan, being a White Sox fan, you know, it's like, eh, and it's the Cardinals. <laughs> so, you know, I, I gotta go with the Phillies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Jonathan Abernathy, how dare you? Um, so FY uh well, um this podcast is various places. And so our brother Jonathan lives in the Midwest, in Missouri. And how <laughs> dare you pick against the St. Louis Cardinals? Like, <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm with y'all, man. Um, I think St. Louis is too old, man. That's just me. Like, Yadier Molina, you know, Albert Pujols. Um, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy that they got from Colorado, man, he's a baller. What's his name again, John? I don't know. But, you know, he's been great for the Rockies, and now he's with St. Louis. Nolan Arenado. Yes, my man. Yep. They got some ballers in St. Louis. Don't get me wrong, but I just think Philly is hungry. And like you said, uh, Ian, baseball, man, is one of those weird sports. It is legitimately a momentum sport. And Philly yeah. just come in with all the confidence. They just free. It's like wings. They free. And in baseball, yeah. that's dangerous when you just free. Like, when you just free, no pressure. The Dodgers finna have some pressure. We're going to talk about that shortly. But <laughs> the Phillies come in. They ain't got no damn pressure. Like, they just coming in. Ooh, ain't nobody expect us here. So we mm -hmm. just swinging the bat. 
You know, St. Louis done won plenty World Series and been to the World Series. They got a little pressure too. Philly just coming in like, who the hell expected us to be here? And so that makes for a real dangerous team in baseball. And so, um, yeah, um, I like the Phillies in this one as well. While we have picked two six seeds against the three seeds thus far, um, the Seattle Mariners, y'all, they are come in and, and they're another team that hasn't been in the playoffs since, what, 21 years, I believe, Jonathan? And so yeah, now, 2001. yeah, 2001. Yep. And so now, and they beat the White Sox. Y'all remember that series? <laughs> I remember that series, Jonathan. I remember that series. I, I promise you, I remember that series. Um, I remember watching it and we were so excited in, and Ann been watching sports since he'd been a knee high baby. Um, mm -hmm. Like I remember being so excited that year, Jonathan, Oh, we had the swag, the White Sox being the locker room playing Tupac. Like, they be doing interviews playing Tupac, Frank Thomas, all swole and stuff. Um, we had yeah. some balls, yeah. man. We, go ahead, in. I said they got sent home. <laughs> they got sent home from <laughs> Seattle. And they got their ass whooped. They yep. got whooped by Seattle. It was like, Jesus Christ. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, A-Rod was on that team, right? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I believe I think so. like a He's little bit team. after that he went to Texas. Yep. And then the following year he went to Texas. Yeah. Yep. That was so A Rod was, was on that team, I believe. Um, and Ichiro Suzuki Suzuki was on that team. Yep. Y'all remember like Ichiro? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ichiro and and they they smacked the socks, man. Um, and and Jonathan's Googling it, but um Googling yeah. the roster. Edgar Martinez, okay. Freddie oh, yeah, Garcia. They had, they had a Edgar yeah. Martinez? Yep. Yeah, they had some ballers. All you got to do is say Edgar Martinez. I remember him, man. Jay um, Brown was on that team. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that team for sure, man. Um, and so with that being said, Jonathan, um, who you got in this series, the Mariners or the Blue Jays? I'm actually taking the Mariners on this one. I don't think yeah. the Blue Jays have a healthy enough team. Um, the Mariners are riding a hot streak right now, and they're just looking like the better consistent team at the moment. Now, don't get me wrong. The Blue Jays can turn around and just completely change the scene of the series this next game if Vlad gets hot, if Bo Bichette gets hot. Like, they've got people to do it. It's just I don't think – the Blue Jays pitching is doing well enough this year to hold the Mariners. Right. Right. Very, very interesting for sure, man. Um, and Jamar stated the Mariners as well. Um, he took the juice on his way to get there. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, Ian, who you got, bro? Um, I got the Blue Jays. I'll go out on the limb and say maybe Blue Jays turn it around. Um, like uh, Jonathan stated, maybe if they the bats can kind of get hot. They got to be quick though, you ain't, you ain't got much time. <laughs> so yeah. if they can get their bats kind of hot. Day. They get their bats kind of hot. I feel like I feel like the Blue Jays can turn it around. They, I mean, they got the team to do it. They they got some talent. That's true. On yeah, uh, the Padres, sure. man, the Padres fellas. Now the Padres are talented. Um, Padres are talented, but the Mets are talented too. And the Mets, ugh, they have one of the best records of baseball all season. Um, but they got they bust whoop yesterday against the Padres. Um, and, and this was right, this was in New York, y'all. Um, this is a tough series for me. Uh, who you got, Jonathan? Um, <laughs> all right, so yeah, this is a tough one because. These are two very good teams. The Mets have been in a slump in the last three weeks. Yeah. And it's Which is why they're here right now. Yeah, like it's really difficult with them simply because, I mean, they're very talented. But all it takes is, I mean, Scherzer just gave up the most runs he's ever done in a playoff game. Right. He got seven earned runs tacked onto him. But they have a very talented offense that was just shut down yesterday. Yeah. I don't think the Padres have a consistent enough pitching staff right now. So I'm 
I said at the beginning of the season, Mets are going to the World Series. Mm. And for them to do that, they're going to win this series. So I still have them winning this series, but things need to change immediately. Right. Yeah. And I think that the Mets are in a one one and 61, um, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But you know, baseball, sometimes that don't matter. Go yeah. ahead, Dan. What was you about to say? So the New York uh, teams, they pretty they had a pretty good year. You know, they uh they had a good year. Uh, the Yankees started off like super hot. Um, so yeah, the New York teams had a pretty good year, but I think I'm gonna go Padres with this one. Um, just like you stated, you know, the Mets they've kind of been in a slump. And it's the wrong time of the year to be in a slump. Like you said, they had to change it around ASAP. Because uh, mm-hmm. it, this ain't like basketball or anything. This ain't no seven game series. So it can be done gotta, in two I days. Turn around with a day or two. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> right, man. And so you're going with the Padres, and, and, yeah, and I'm gonna rock with you, man. I, I like the Mets, man, but that 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 told me a lot. The way they got smacked at home, Jonathan seven zero. Now baseball is a sport where you can turn things around quickly. But, uh, yeah. man, the Padres are very talented, too, man. I mean, they even think that Tatis, he he out. Imagine if that dude was playing. Like, but they still got bats everywhere. They still got a great pitching staff. They done took guys from the Cubs um, and brought them to their pitching staff. Um, and so I know that they got talent everywhere. Um, this is their first ride, too, so they're on a free boat, too. New York um, is New York pressure everywhere in New York. 100-win season in then on top of that, you know, people got expectations because you won in New York. That's heavy in New York. It's heavy as hell. Mm-hmm. It's all in your back. And San Diego, well, that's about 30 people that live there. He just coming out like, hey, you know, we, we just <laughs> we just happen to be here. <laughs> like, you know? I mean, but the only the only big sports team besides maybe like the college teams, but that's the biggest sports team in San Diego now. For real? Yeah. But they don't have they don't have a football team no more. So yeah. Facts, bro. So, okay. Yep. And so just an FYI world, the Dodgers, they play the uh, Padres, the Mets winner. Uh, the Braves, the Defender World Series champions, they play the Cardinals, the Phillies winner. Uh, the Astros, uh, the uh, championship runner-up, uh, they play uh, the Blue Jays, Mariners winner, and the Yankees play either the Guardians or Rays winner. And so um, I'm just curious, Jonathan, if you in the playoffs, and you looking at a team to be dangerous to look out for. Which team are you looking out for, bro? We going back to the Midwest? Mm-hmm. Give me one second. The team I'd be scared to look out for? I'm scared of the Yankees. The Yankees would only be an issue – if their players, their offense actually comes to play, shows up, yeah. Scary. That's what makes it scary, Jonathan. Because when them bats get to going, paper, they get scary. to going. Yeah. Like they get to going, and, and they are, people don't realize they done had a great season. Like, and this is very inconsistently. Mm-hmm. You know? Very inconsistently. I, I recall multiple times in looking at articles and the manager pissed off because they didn't got blew out one game and the next game they blew out 12-0. Yep. They, they start yeah. they start off they start off crazy hot. They start off crazy hot. Right. So I don't know what to expect from them really, you know. But if if you get the good Yankees, you got something to deal with. Honestly, the team to look out for though is the Astros. Because you didn't really hear much about them this year. You heard mm-hmm. about the Braves because of the, the race with the Mets. You heard right. about the Dodgers all year because of how hot of a team they were. And the Yankees, I mean, you heard about them all year because of Aaron Judge. But the Astros, you didn't really hear about them. And, and shout out to Dusty Baker and the job he's been doing. All he do is win, right? And all that man do is win, yeah. win, Every, win. Everywhere Every he goes, goes. He just can't get over. He just can't get over the hump. He just can't get that World Series trophy. He kind of reminds me a lot of Andy Reid, y'all. Yeah. I know, you know, they, they win. Y'all. They win. 
It's just going to take one day for him to finally get over that hump. One day, hopefully. Hopefully he'll get over that hump. And that would be great, good. Jonathan, for a black manager, too, because I always oh, feel yeah. bad, man, for the Texas Rangers manager. <laughs> the dude who used to... Uh... Remember he came one out, bro, one out away from the World Series Championship? He used to be the... Game six against the Cardinals with the Texas Rangers and blew the whole series after that. Yep. That yeah. hurts me. I'm like... Mm-hmm. The story of David Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. And he can go eat anywhere for free in St. Louis. Not that it's a lot of great anywhere. restaurants. Well, <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. They yeah, actually man. pay him to go there. Yeah. That is some good barbecue in St. Louis. I'll give y'all that, man. Let me some barbecue. Okay, I'm sorry for that ADHD, man. But um, yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah, bro. Like, um, man. You 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 make your sound with Dusty Baker, man, and the Astros. Let's see. I'd love to see them get over the hump. I really, really would. That'd be great. Yeah. I think a big issue is the fact that they need to get back there and win it this year or next year for that matter, simply because they, they're still living off that cheating scandal championship. Yeah. yeah. The only play. one in franchise history, it's tarnished. Right. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And so, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, wh- wh- who is your team, Jonathan? Is it the who you got? That's a dangerous team to look out for. The Astros. The Astros. Okay. And what about you, Wayne? You got any team that you that's that's dangerous that could come in and shake some things up? Uh, one team I do want to say, but then I feel like they like. They got a lot of pressure on them. Besides the Yankees, besides the Astros, I would say the Dodgers. But you know, being from LA, that's a lot of pressure on those guys. But I will, I will say probably the Dodgers as well too. Yeah, I mean the Dodgers got a lot of pressure because they got an All Star roster. Yeah. When you got Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts on the same team and Clayton Kershaw, you got some stuff working. Yeah, you it's know? like they have to win. Like they almost have to go to you know World Series. Yeah, yeah. If they lose, it's going to be like the Nets choking. So just yeah, rough, that's rough, a potential rough. headline. That's a potential yeah. headline, world. Just an FYI. The Dodgers lose. It's going to be all over everywhere. It's even going to be in France. They're going to be like, the Dodgers lost. How the hell <laughs> this happened? And so, um, <laughs> you know it. You know it. Yeah, just, just an FYI. Um, all right, fellas. Um, and lastly, which team, um, minus the matchups, we haven't gotten to the matchups. Just coming in, who is your team to win it all, Jonathan, and Ann, really quickly? Who is your team to win it all? Mm. Now, are we talking, like, top seeds, or are we talking about, like, yeah. surprise? I'm talking about championship. I'm talking about World Series championship. Who is your pick to win it all? I, I still got to go with the Mets. Mets. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The Mets. Interesting. And, and Ian, who you got, bro? Um, so I have a cousin that loves this particular team. He'll probably love what I'm about to say right now. But and I never really typically pick them, but I, I I'm gonna say Yankees. I feel like maybe maybe it could be their year. I'll say the Yankees. Gotcha. Um, Ian, did you ever get a chance to meet Travis, cornerback, um, O four team, right before you came in? Yeah, well, he did. Um, he did FCA one year. I met him. Right. At, yeah, like my freshman year, I believe. Gotcha. Yeah. So Travis, um, he's a um, he's the person who trained for the Dodgers, and he played football with us at Morgan Park. Such mm-hmm. excellence at Morgan Park, by the way. And so, um, I'm gonna pick the Dodgers because um, he's keeping those guys in shape, and they got a great roster, Jonathan. So, I got the Dodgers winning it all. Um, and if they don't. The headlines will be large. All right. And so with that being said, fellas, let's just uh, quickly get to overreactions. Um, <laughs> curious. Jonathan, is it an overreaction to think that the Dallas Cowboys are well-rounded enough to make a deep Super Bowl run with this current roster? Is it an overreaction to think that? It's an overreaction every year to think that. <laughs> I they are. Really cool. <laughs> they are a horrible team. I do think they're a better team with Cooper Rush, but they're still not a good team. 
yeah. I think Dak is highly overrated. So, mm. right, yeah. And just quickly, guys, for our MLB comments, um, Jamar Gilman said the Metropolitans. So he likes the Mets too. He likes the Mets a lot. Um, wouldn't that be amazing, y'all, to see a, a a subway series between the Yankees and Mets? That'd be fantastic. Um, and then uh, Quinn McClain, uh, he stated, "Watch out for the Dodgers," and he said the Yankees will get cold. All right, so we'll see how the Yankees do. Um, and if they get cold, it won't be a surprise, Q, because according to Jonathan and baseball people, the Yankees are up and down. And so um, we'll see how they do. Um, okay. And so, Ian, is it an overreaction, bro, to think that the Dallas Cowboys are well-rounded enough to make a deep Super Bowl run with this current roster? As the good brother Jonathan will say, yes, it's an overreaction because – we go through this every year with the Cowboys. Oh, the Cowboys have the roster to go to the Super Bowl. They have this, they have that. And the Cowboys give us a nine and seven season or eight and eight or seven and nine. Or and they win the division. Sorry. Right. They, they, win the, they win the division is seven and nine or eight and eight. And they go to the playoffs with the wild card and, and lose. At your at, at nah. world at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the same, it's the same song every year. So it nah. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, I'll, I'll, to be honest, I'll, I'll, I'll keep. I'll be honest. I won't ever believe in the Cowboys until Jerry Jones steps, kind of, kind of steps back from G, the GM role and just yeah. strictly stays owner. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Yes. Next, fellas. Um, Jonathan, is it an overreaction to think that Tyreek Hill or another fellow wide receiver? will have more receiving yards than the entire Bears offensive unit by the end of the season. That's an overreaction. Just to say that. This is how bad the Bears offense is, though. No, but at the same time, that's stating that Justin Fields isn't going to throw for 1,500 yards this year. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's it's a 17-game season. I see him at least throwing nothing lower than 2,800 yards. All right. He needs to reach 3,000, man, but 2,800, I guess that's good for him because he he mixes it up a lot with running in and yeah. passing. So, yeah. Ian, what about you? Uh, I mean, to be honest, the way they've been playing these last couple of weeks, it is, it is a 17-game season. So I think it's a slight overreaction, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked if Cooper Cup got closer to you know closer to the yards that we've been putting up as far as passing. I mean, it's been it's been kind of horrible to watch these last couple of weeks with a lot of factors that go into it. It's not just Justin Fields, so. But um, eh, it, it's an overreaction, but I don't think it's that much of an overreaction the way they've been playing. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, is it an overreaction, y'all, to think that the New York Giants are for real? Yes, it's definitely over. <laughs> it's definitely an overreaction to think they're for real. I don't think they. I don't think they're for real. They, to be honest, they should have won last week. They didn't look that much better than the Bears. They, they kind of look similar. I don't. Very similar teams. Yeah. Yeah, they look kind of look similar. Very overreaction. You know they're having quarterback um, trouble too, because Daniel Jones is hurt, and so Tyrod Taylor stepped in and he got hurt too. Right, then he got hurt too. He didn't, and Daniel Jones he didn't even throw up a hundred yards last week, and we lost. Yeah, bro, excuse me, I'm sorry, y'all. It's a church I mean, across the street, um, and I don't need to be loud like this, but like literally, he didn't even throw for a hundred yards, and you still lose. Y'all lost to literally 250 yards of offense. And All he did was run for two touchdowns and scramble, <laughs> and that was the game. Saquon had 149 yards rushing on 31 carries. Like, Ran all over the Bears, basically. And all Daniel Jones did was just push it in at the last two or, two or three yards. Bootlegs. Two bootlegs. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think – it's an overreaction, but 
I believe they do have a strong possibility to make a strong wild card run. I don't they're think they're going to out. Yeah. I don't All think right. they're going to the Phillies. Like, they're going to outplay consistently week in and week out the Phillies and getting wins. Right. Gotcha. The Eagles. Yes. And so, those are the overreactions. We'll see, y'all, um, what happens with OBJ going forward. Um, but I would love – I just want to put this out there, y'all. I would love to see the Bears try to make a push for OBJ. I doubt if he comes to Chicago – because he knows he's going to probably win a Super Bowl, but he probably going to go somewhere right. warm or somewhere where he can win a championship. Yeah, uh, I see sure. him going to the Bills or back to the Rams. Bills or Rams. What about Kansas City, And You don't think that's a good fit for him? Uh, I mean, that would that'd be, that'd be an awesome fit for him as far as, you know, I know Andy Reid will move him around a lot. You know, it just depends on, you know, how healthy he gets. And But I, I agree with Jonathan. I think those would be the two teams, the Bills and uh, – probably back to L.A., but the Chiefs could be like a sneaky third team that could like possibly snatch them with him and Juju right. and, and Travis Kelsey with the way uh, Pat playing right now. Uh, that's video game numbers. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> right. I'm telling you. Exactly. So, yes, fellas, uh, those are our overreactions. Um, just some college football notable games so we conclude with our week six NFL picks. 17 TCU, y'all, at 19 Kansas. Kansas have been surprising this year. Um, yeah. FYI, in Tennessee, bro. Woo, they got this quarterback, Jonathan. This yeah. look here can ball. I cannot wait to see him in the NFL level. He remind me of like a Lamar Jackson mixed with like a Jamarcus Russell in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not NFL Jamar, but college and so <laughs> that, not you biggest had, you had to, history. yeah you had to take that huh? <laughs> big distinction big distinction and so this kid can ball and he got the volunteers at number eight in the country this is a big deal for tennessee because they yeah. they're like the cowboys fan base they always got a lot of high hopes and get let down in the first three mm-hmm. weeks of the season but this time they are undefeated they are undefeated in and Jonathan, and they are going for that championship like the one they got with Peyton Manning. And so, let's see. Um, so, eight Tennessee, y'all, at 25 LSU. And so, if Jamarcus Russell is watching the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, we send love to you, brother. Um, they are going up against your alma mater, the LSU Tigers, um, who have actually been um, – they're a physical football team, but they've been a disappointment thus far. Um, yeah. 11 uh, Utah – at 18 UCLA, um, and uh, your boys, the Ohio State Buckeyes, they so quiet. Nobody ever noticed because they just win so much. Three Ohio State at Michigan State. It's a dangerous game, though, because it's in Lansing. Um, yeah. 16 BYU at Notre Dame. Um, and Washington <laughs> State, y'all, check this out, Jonathan. USC is back. They are ranked number six in the country, bro. And so they got a chance at the college football playoff. Um, and so Washington at number six, USC. So these are today's notable college football games, and we'll see how they turn out. And so with that being said, y'all, let's dive into some NFL. We got a bunch of two and two teams out there. Whole bunch of them. So uh in uh you go ahead and lead us off, bro. Jonathan, you chime in. And so we got the New York Giants three and one at the Packers three and one, bro. This is playoff implications. Psych. So, um, and who you got, bro? The Giants, they finna pull off an upset um, in London tomorrow? Because you know they're in London. Yeah, they play. Yeah, they play early in London. Nah, I got I got the Packers. I'm Packers just a – Packers been playing – it pains me to say this, but they've been playing pretty good. So, I, I, got, I got the Packers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um – by the way, uh, Prescott JB stated, y'all, there will never be a cooler statement a dad can make than my son is the starting quarterback for Ohio State. Yeah, this is facts, man. This is a great, great yeah. out and a half, indeed. True. Um, yeah, Jonathan, who you got, bro? Giants or the Pack? I mean, let's be realistic. Aaron Rodgers knows how to win. He knows how to win in the lights in a regular season. 
Let's clarify right. that because he doesn't know how to yes. win in the lights in the playoffs. So exactly. Yeah, right. Let's get to the right <laughs> I mean, Aaron Rodgers is literally the modern day Peyton Manning. Yeah, Peyton I, Manning I, was my favorite player. I mean, he got put out of the playoffs several times. He won twice, thankfully, but all he did was win in the regular season. So I'm taking the Packers. Right. He won a lot, Peyton Manning. That dude won a lot, y'all, right? I mean, I don't ever recall him never being. Every year was 13 wins, damn near. Every year. Every year except um, at least first 11. One. Right. And so excellence, pure excellence with Peyton Manning. But he, he fell short a lot. You're right. He only won one Super Bowl with that team. Only one. And he beat the Bears, um, our Bears, <laughs> with Rex Grossman at quarterback. He beat yeah, our Bears in with Rex Grossman at quarterback. You guys are better off starting so Kyle Orton into that Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, I feel like we – I always say that. Like, if we would have car started, Kyle Orton, we would have won a Super Bowl. I know. And you guys I'm started off with a 7-0 lead. Yep. Yeah, you know, Devin Hester was – yeah, man. Yeah, it was – It was. you know, that pains us, man. That pains us. Anyhow, um, yeah. So, with this game – I got to go with the Packers, too. Um, I don't know who's starting, Daniel Jones or Terod Taylor. Um, the Giants, um, I think, will try to make it interesting because they realize it's the Packers. But the Packers, um, yeah, the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. They, they, they win. They win. Um, y'all, okay. Our boy, um, Deshaun, um, his Stillers. Um, Kenny Pickett is making his first start tomorrow, and but he's yeah. up in Buffalo. Was this a smart thing to do? I would have benched him. I wouldn't let him start in Buffalo. Yeah, that's that's tough to spring him out on the, you know, good team like like Buffalo, but you know, you got to get his feet wet at some point, you know. It can't can't only baby him. Something like his whole life. Yeah. So um you know, I I'll go with Buffalo. You know, with one of the top 3 quarterback, maybe top 2 quarterback in the league right now. <laughs> Hey man, uh, look. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, go the, I'll, I'll go with the Bills, man. I got the Bills. All right. Okay. You got the you got the Bills. I don't yeah. blame you. I mean, um, Jonathan, you got the Steelers picking up a, a big upset tomorrow, man. He finished shot. Man, the work. Steelers are the best worst team in the NFL. I'm going with the Bills. It, it's just bad. <laughs> the Steelers are so bad right now. I mean, there's not much more to say. I mean, you got receivers dropping passes. You got a merry-go-round of quarterbacks. You got the defense who's inconsistent with yeah. no TJ. Like, uh, it's no just TJ, yeah. yeah, you saw the kick they kicked last week. It was one of the worst <laughs> kicks I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's like one of those kicks on Madden when you just put it all the way to the side. Side, yep. Yeah. And then you don't even get the power to make it there. Hey. Yeah. And the crowd, yeah, they just knew as soon as it came off his leg, it was like a horse show. It was like, oh, like <laughs> it was like, Jesus Christ, like, is that real? Like, we serious? Like, that's how bad the Steelers are. Um, you couldn't pay me to pick the Steelers to win this game. Um, I'm gonna go with the Bills. Um, if they pull it off, it'll be big news. Um, the Chargers at the Browns. Um, the Chargers bounced back last week against the Texas team. And the Browns, um, they played competitive, but they lost to the Falcons. And so, um, who you got for this one, Ian? Chargers bounce back with the Browns. Um, tough game. Two uh competitive teams. <sighs> mm. Some some in me is saying the Browns because of Nick Chubb and you know how they can control the game with their run game. But I'm I'm gonna go with the better team. I'll go I'll go Chargers. If I was a betting man, I'll go Chargers. But my football instincts are telling me to say the Browns. Got the but Browns. I'm, okay. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. But I'm I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the Chargers because the Browns defense they haven't you know they have a have a damn good defense, but they haven't been playing well this year. So at least yet. So I'll I'll say Chargers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Jonathan, what you got, bro? Um, I don't know. Chargers defense is still kind of still kind of iffy, but 
sad thing is I got them on my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I got them and the Steelers defense, and it's like, oh man, it's like, all right, who's gonna who's gonna suck less this week? Right. And I've got to go with the Chargers on this because I honestly will never be a believer in the Browns, even when Deshaun Watson comes back. I don't think he's gonna have a good year when he comes back. Really? Oh man, I he think, come with that Browns team. Think, Thank you for pointing that out. Uh-uh, Jonathan. They finna kill. I think they it's be better kill. to wait to start him till next year. Hmm. So he gets I'm just a imagining the reps, Jonathan like, him with them backs, bro. Oh, they finna kill. I don't think so. Mm. It'll be interesting. It's going to be Especially when they play against the Texans, the worst team in the league. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to come out looking like a superstar and then flop the next week. So, in this game, though, you got the Chargers, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, that all makes sense, bro. <laughs> and so, yes, I'm going to go with you guys. Uh, man, this is an interesting game because the Browns at home, and they're a good team. Um, yeah. and, and they can just pound you with these two backs, and, and they take you home, literally. Um, shout out to the uh, quarterback for the Browns. Um, what is his name again, Ian? Um, <laughs> Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. He has been consistent. Um, the games that the Browns have lost has been on them. It hasn't been on – it's been really, literally, they they choked. The, you obviously saw they choked big time a few weeks back. Then last week, they gave up the lead in the fourth quarter against the uh, Falcons. Um, okay. So it's not like they're getting whooped. Um, and so Ann basically stated these are two competitive teams. Um, but I think the Chargers are just more talented. Lord, this is a really hard. This is a hard game. Um I'm gonna go with the Chargers, man, just because I think Austin Eckler and and they just got more weapons with the, yeah, with the Chargers. I, overall. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bosa, you know, I think he he wreaks havoc against Jacoby Brissett. And I think he is literally on him like flies on rice, a big part of the game, as well as uh the, the Mac Daddy. I think the Mac Daddy's coming for him too. Chargers, y'all, I'm putting it out here as my Super Bowl pick for the AFC. So I got to ride with the Chargers. I'm mm. going with the Chargers. Big I like the Chargers. Yeah, I like the Chargers. I like this team a lot. Now, I know that I said that Jamar and everybody else going crazy. They're like, oh, we're going to note that. And so, yes, my brothers, uh, please note it because I like the Chargers. Real quick, Joey Bosa's yeah. out eight to ten weeks possibly. Damn, for real? Yep. yep. Always injuries. That's uh... – Always injuries with the Chargers. Every year, never fails. Brain injury. Right. Somebody always hurt. This is fact. If it ain't Austin Eckler, it's Bosa. If it ain't Bosa, it's Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Uh, Derwin James is all, is and it's always they big big time players too. Right. Jeez. Yeah. Um. I'm still going to Chargers. Uh. But that hurts for real. Um. That really really hurts. But I would not be surprised y'all if the Browns win that game, especially being in the dog pound. And it's starting to get a little cool now. You know what I'm saying? It's starting to get a little cool now, you know. So Browns definitely got a chance to win that one for real. Um, but I'm gonna uh I'm, I'm gonna go with the Chargers. All right, y'all. Davis Mills, how has he looked for y'all as a starting quarterback thus far this year? Um, I mean he's a work in progress. Is he terrible? Which one? Uh, I don't I don't think he's terrible. You know, he's a work in progress, but you know, it's not much to work with over there in Houston. They're young, you know, they're just trying to, you know, kind of figure it out on offense. Um with him as well, you know, he's what second year in the league, so he's just trying to figure it out. Um, I don't think he's terrible. It, is he their savior? I, I don't know that, but I don't think he's terrible though. Right, right. So did he uh, get his first dub tomorrow against the Jags? Nah, I'm, I'm gonna take the Jags, man. Trevor and the Jags—they've been looking pretty good this year. They've been looking kind of looking more confident this year. So uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Jags. Jonathan, what about you? Uh, like I said, the Jags are a nasty team right now. Like they are looking really good. They put up competitive games in both their losses. And their two wins are 
substantial wins. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with the Jags in this one. Yeah, I'm with y'all. I'm going to go with the Jags as well. I can't. No disrespect. I love Lovey, man. Really do. But um, he got a really bad quarterback in Davis Mills. Um, I'm going to go with the really Jags. Bad. Is he really bad? He's got a really bad overall team in, in Houston. <laughs> right. Y'all know how that field goal, y'all know how that field goal looked with Pittsburgh last week. That's how Davis Mill looked when he throw the ball at times. They'd be like, what the hell? Oh, is that? that man's <laughs> over there trying to build build a Lego display with mega blocks. <laughs> giving out balls to the crowd, just giving them out. Here, you want the ball here. You know, like it just y'all type of stuff, man. I ain't never seen a quarterback throw the ball in the crowd as much as Davis Mills. Kids, be, they just love going to Texas games, you know, for the free balls. So. Um, yeah, they man. Foul, um, they throw foul balls, huh? <laughs> throwing foul balls, bro. I'm talking about throwing field goals. You name it, dog. Like, it's just all type of balls on there. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Jags, man. Um, The Bears, y'all. Our Bears. They are up in Minnesota. And check this out, uh, M. The Bears could be three and two with a terrible uh, offense. Or the Vikings could let people know, like, hey, we arrived and we four and one. And so who you got with this one, bro? You know, it pains me every week. You know, I come on here and I pick the bears and they go out and I'm gonna find myself cussing at the TV and I'm angry and they mess up my whole Sunday. This is every this is every week. This is every week. Um man, I'm not even gonna lie to you. The way to the way this playbook, this playbook is looking, and you know these receivers, they can't get open. The O line, they halfway block on some plays, they don't. And I know Justin's still trying to figure it out in a sense. As much as I want to pick the Bears, um, I'm gonna have to go Vikings. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What about you, um, Jonathan? You know, I've been saying this since last year. Until you guys get rid of your coach. You guys will not make any deep runs. And I believe he is a very bad coach for Justin Fields. And Justin Fields is not going to flourish the way he needs to, which I've always said the Bears are very bad with quarterbacks. You have a potentially great quarterback right now. Yeah. With the wrong coach. Well, you're talking about Matt Nagy or Eberflus? Both of them. Because, you know, Nagy not there no more. Yeah, but no, but Eberflus is Eber from, from you guys. Either. Yeah, right, we got Eberflus from the uh, Colts. Well, I mean, I don't I don't have a problem with Eberflus as of right now. He got, you know, he has the defense plan, but he got Eddie Jackson plan, you know, at a Pro Bowl level right now. It's just the – it's Getsy and, the, you know, the offensive play call and, you know, the way they constructed this team around, you know, a young quarterback. We have a whole bunch of – Number three receivers and you know Darnell Mooney, he's not number one. I love Darnell Mooney's game, but he's not a number one receiver. He can't, you know, shoulder the load. And then, you know, he haven't they haven't even been using him right in the offense. You know, it's just I don't know. The off it's always the offense. You know, we get we get an okay team and then we get the defenses, you know, they you know, they're playing good and the offense is always lagging behind. Like, come on guys, we're gonna we're gonna help y'all out this week. So, so right. I'm picking the Vikings to win this one. Yeah. And Jonathan, I'm with you. I'm going to go with the Vikings too. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get good bears or bad bears. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get the bears from week one or if I'm going to get the bears from last week against the Giants. It's not like the bears have gotten whooped really much either. I mean, they did get handled against the uh, Packers. But um, if, if they lose <laughs> this one tomorrow, they definitely going to be out on the wrong footing in the division. Um, and so, you know, Hopefully they can get it done. We'll see. But um, I think the Vikings are the better team. More weapons, too. Um, yeah, definitely more weapons in Minnesota. And so the Lions, y'all, the Lions, they they keep – the Lions just keep doing me favors. Every time I look up, the Lions are choking a game. Um, and, and, and they have done so for the last few weeks, greatly. Um, do the Lions, and you've been consistent with picking the Lions, and they've been giving you L's. Um, hey. They've been giving me W's. Um, so are you going to continue this streak or what? So I'm so mad at myself last week. <clears throat> I had TJ Hawkinson, the Lions tight end on my fantasy team. So I take him off my fantasy team. 
the guy has a fucking monster game. Had like eight catches for like 160 yards and like two touchdowns. Yeah, I missed out on 39 points in my fantasy team. So I'm pissed about that. And they put up third. They put put up 35 points last week and they still lost in a shootout. They put up 45. Like, on, 45. All right. I was like, they put up 45 and still lost. I benched TJ. Right. He has 40 points in fantasy and I missed out on it. Man. They balled up the offense. Yeah, and it's like they have the talent. They have one of the most talented running backs in the league. Jeff Goff's not a bad quarterback. Um, they got some receivers here and there. And, you know, TJ Hawkins, he's a, he's a damn good tight end. Can block and right. catch the ball. They have, you know, they had some young spots on defense. It's just they just can't see. They, they like, they can't get right. You know, they'd be right there, and then they just find a way to, to mess it up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna stick with the Lions this week. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna stick with the Lions. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Uh, you sticking with the Lions? You got the pigeon. I- I'm definitely going Lions because honestly, I think Bill Belichick's just sabotaging the Patriots season. Yeah. And I don't trust Zappy. Da- da- no, no, not happening. Nah, no. No, nah, I'm going with the Lions. I'm just going to leave it at that. Wow. I think the Patriots, y'all, I think the Patriots bounce back tomorrow. This is the perfect bounce back game. You know, if you need a W, you know, Detroit, everybody in the league is like, we done lost a straight game, but we got Detroit this week. All right? So we got Detroit this week. We got a chance to win this game, all right? And so I think the Patriots are like, hey, damn it. We got the Lions this week. We got a real good chance to win this game. And we are in Foxborough. I think the Patriots find a way to get it done. I think the Lions find a way to lose this game uh, in, in the fourth quarter, and they miss a field goal at the end of the game, and they lose by two points. They lose 20 to 18. Jeff Goff <laughs> doing in the, in, the, in the end zone at the end of the game. I got the Patriots. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. I'm right with the Lions, man. We're right with my Lions this week. I, I'm not a. Bill Belichick ain't been showing me. He ain't been showing me nothing good as of recently. I'm going. I'm gonna stick with the Lions. Lions in the no, pick. No, man. Up. Look, bro. I'm telling you what's gonna happen. Look, the Lions gonna go down. They are gonna have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. They are gonna go down to the 15 yard line, have a chance to kick the field goal, and it's gonna go way to the crowd, and it's uh, just gonna they, be like. It's just gonna be like wow, like get this is get in field get in field goal range and holding call, clipping call, 15 yard penalty. <laughs> exactly. They're gonna do like three of them and they're gonna be down at the 50 yard line for you know it and then kick the field goal and it's gonna go on the crowd and stuff. Like it, it this is typical Detroit football. I'm starting to think that this team is cursed. I swear to life I do. And so we will see if they lose tomorrow. I'm replaying this Jonathan and Ian. <laughs> replaying everything. I will make a confident in this Detroit team. I will personally make a clip. I will personally make a clip of it and post it. <laughs> please. Absolutely. <laughs> please. Because the Lions, y'all better not lose tomorrow, man. Because y'all been getting a lot of love on the early morning sports talk podcast. <laughs> Lars, Jonathan, Ian, everybody. And so um, a lot of love. comments, y'all. Uh Lions might have a chance, but with both teams that one and three, it's gonna be a full fight. Uh, Patriots will pull it off, though. So Frank got the Patriots. Um, he also stated that he's going to um, go with the Bears in an upset. Um, and Frank is just pulling off all type of upsets. And he got the Texans winning on their first game, too. Um, and so we'll see, awesome. uh, Frank. And so uh, it'll be very interesting. And so I think the Lions find a way to lose it in the fourth quarter. Um, all right, y'all, the Seahawks. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Geno Smith, uh, Jonathan. He's been balling out, man. Or maybe it was just he played against the Lions last week. <laughs> Possibly. Wow. Possibly played against the Lions. Perfect bounce back game for any quarterback. And so, great, great game. You know, he put up 48 points. Looked like an all-star out there. Um, they are going against the Saints, man, who, y'all, check this out. The rusty rifle was not rusty last week, Ian. Yeah. Andy Dalton played a really nice game. Andy Dalton looked like Cincinnati Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. They just happened to lose, but he played a great game. Um, check this out, man. The Saints um, or the Seahawks could be three and two, but 
it's up to y'all to uh, give us the pick. So, Jonathan, who wins this? And who wins this? So, uh, Ian, go ahead, chime in. Um, Jameis is out, right? Jameis is still out. Yep. I love – so, I'll say this. I love uh, – I love what the Saints got on offense. They got so much. They got so many weapons across the board. It just, you know, they get it together. Just stay healthy and, you know, just get on the same accord. Uh, I know Jameis is out. But um, I don't know. Gino, Gino's been, he's been balling. He's been balling this year. So, uh, Pete Carroll over there. Yeah. But I'm going a, I'm to a go with, I'm going to go with the Saints. I'm going to go with the Saints. My, this pick might be a little biased and I don't even like the Saints. But I do like a lot of the players that they got on offense. And the defense, the defense is pretty solid too. So I'm gonna go Saints for sure. Yeah. Um Jonathan, what you got? I think I'm gonna have to go with the Seahawks this game. I, I don't trust Andy Dalton to have good games back to back weeks. <laughs> but who I do trust to have good games and breakout games back to back weeks is DK Metcalf. And he, yeah. he had a hell of a game last week. So, I mean, if Gino could just get him the ball and their defense can play a little bit and stop the run, I mean, you stop the run on against the Saints, I mean, it's pretty much shut down. The whole offense is shut down at that point. They don't have a consistent quarterback to get a ball consistently to the receivers. All them great wide receivers. Michael Thomas. Um yep. I mean, they got some great – I mean, Jarvis Landry. That little number three, the little rookie for uh, the Saints, he cold. Number 12, he can ball. Chris Olave, yeah. So. Yeah, Olave. Okay. They're just not getting the ball, though. But. Yeah. They got they got, wep- they got weapons all over, you know. Alvin Kamara. All over. All over. Mark Ingram, yeah. They, they, it's, it, it should be easy for them, but, you know, it's, I'll come down to the quarterback. Yeah. Um, and so you got the Seahawks, uh, Jonathan? Yes. Yeah. Um, I got the Seahawks too, but I think y'all, this is the game of the, uh this is gonna be the funnest game to watch them all, I think. I think this fireworks, man, because the Seahawks don't got no defense. Um, but they got offense for sure. Um, and so I'm looking for or maybe it was just that they played the Lions last week. I'm sorry for mentioning that again. And so maybe they just played the Lions last week and they just looked like some like Amazing. Give my Lions hell this week, man. Give my Lions hell. <laughs> so we are gonna see. Um, but I think this is a fun game, y'all. It's in New Orleans. Um, I'm looking forward to this game for real. And so um, I'm gonna go at the Seahawks in a fun game. I want to watch. I'm watching that one, y'all tomorrow. Um, the Dolphins at the Jets. And who you got, bro? Um, Teddy Bridgewater get it done or um Zach Wilson three and two. Which one? It's a tough game to pick. Uh, I like Teddy. Teddy's, you know, pretty decent. Um, pretty decent veteran. I don't know. I mean, the Jets they have a lot of young talent. Young. I don't know if they know how to win games yet. But um, man, Dolphins they got to. I don't know. It seemed like they was on a high streak. They was pretty high. You know, unfortunate thing happened for Tua. I don't know. This one is this is a tough one. The division game. Hmm. I'm gonna go out on the limb. I'm gonna say Jets. I'm gonna say Zach Wilson get it done. I'm gonna say Jets. Jets. I I'm actually going with the Jets too on this one. I give a little bit more credit to Zach Wilson than I do Teddy. But yeah. I don't think. Teddy knows how to command that Dolphins offense. And it seems like the offense is rallying a bit more behind Zach Wilson than any other quarterback they've had. So I'm going to go with the Jets on this one. I think the Jets are just a lucky team that are two and two. But it's really on four in reality. Um, I got the Dolphins in this one. Um, the Dolphins got too many weapons. The fact that I saw that bomb that Teddy Briggs wanted to do to uh, Tyreek Hill, y'all, last week, that let me know that the Dolphins still got a chance to be explosive. And you don't need too much explosion to beat the Jets, just as you don't need too much explosion to beat the Lions. So, you add it up. 
Dolphins. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the Dolphins in this one. I, I don't think the Jets, no. Nah. Uh, but check this out, y'all. The Falcons, two and two, man. They at the Bucks. Could the Bucks li- literally be two and three? And could this offensive line stuff we've been talking about prior to the season really start to come to fruition right before our eyes end? Who you got? Uh, I'm going I'm to take the Bucks. Um, I think they find a way to get it done. You know, Tom Brady. He, at, he does look a little older this year. It is, he, he, in my opinion, he looks like an old man out there this year. He, he looks like his age this year. But um, you know, win is win, man. I feel like you know he'll find he'll find a way to win and lead his team to a win. Gotcha, bro. Gotcha. Uh, Jonathan, um, you the Falcons, man. Show us that they for real. Um, or, or you got the Bucks. Um, so, oh, so Brandon, me and you were the only ones to pick the Falcons last week, and they played against the Browns. Everybody was going for the Browns, it seemed like, and I think the Falcons are a surprise team, but beating the Bucks, Tom Brady just has a way of winning, even with bad teams around him like I mean he's always had a defense and yeah. I believe the Bucks are going to pull this one off right yeah so. and by the way y'all just an FYI um Dwayne Hawkins our brother he's been posting a lot of injuries but El Patterson y'all is out for four to six weeks I think that hurts the Falcons tremendously oh, big yeah. blow so, yeah big, big blow. blow he he was one of the top rushers in the NFL and so I think that hurts the Falcons, man. So I'm going to go with the Bucks at home, too. Um, the Titans, y'all, my Titans, they are bouncing back. Y'all disrespected the Titans last week, and they came back and reminded y'all who they were. <laughs> and so um, the Titans, um, they are against the Commanders tomorrow, and Carson Wentz. And so did Carson Wentz uh, get a W in the W tomorrow in Washington? Um, and uh, who you got? Am I uh... – <laughs> the w. Yeah, the w. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the command. I'm gonna take the commander. I'm gonna take the commander. Command. Oh wow! Over the Titans. Okay. Commander. I'm taking. I will say this time and time again. Carson Wentz is poo. <laughs> as long as he is leading the team. They're they're no, I'm taking the Titans in this one. Derrick Henry <laughs> is going to have a monster game. I I'm talking 150 yards and two possible touchdowns. Like Derrick Henry is going to run wild all over the Commanders. Carson Wentz going to throw three picks. <laughs> <laughs> three picks. <laughs> right. Okay. And so yeah. Um. I'm with y'all. I'm gonna go with the Titans. Um, but I know uh so I'm with you, uh Jonathan. I'm gonna pick the Titans. Um I, I don't believe in, in in Carson Winston. Ron Rivera, he's a nice head coach, but um somehow, man, things haven't been meshing out really there in Washington. Um, the nine is at the Panthers, man. Do uh Baker Mayfield, guess what, y'all? Rumblings have been starting now with Baker Mayfield's starting ability in Carolina. People are starting to scream for the um, other guy. I forgot his name. Um, he he was there last year. Um, yeah, exactly. So Ro, Ro, it's starting to get rumblings. And so it's a big game for him. Um, but the Niners are coming in with Jimmy G. And so uh, who you got for this one? And I know you're a Panthers fan. Uh, I mean, so much talent on the. So much talent on that Panthers team is kind of just going up by the wayside in their prime. It, it kills me. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go Niners, just probably a better coach team. Uh, I, to be honest, I'll be surprised if Matt Rule makes it through the year. He, he'll probably be out of there. All right. Jonathan, what about you, man? I got two words. Nick Bosa. That, I, so, I mean, he, he is just going to lay Baker out. We yeah. might see <laughs> Sam Darnold this game. 
Um, Big payback. I'm going with the 49ers on this one because I know if I don't in this game specifically, one of my closest friends is probably going to kick my butt. But so I'm going with the Niners. I'm with you guys. I'm going with the Niners as well. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles, y'all, they are going up to Arizona. Um, and so um, what do the Eagles do tomorrow, Ian? What happens? It's the only undefeated team left, right? Yep. Yeah. That that AJ Brown signing is looking like the best the best deal of the, of the offseason. Um, I'm going Eagles, man. Eagles five and up. Fly Eagles fly. Jalen Hurts, he's been been in his bag this year, man. He's been balling. Um, when people questioned him, did think he would be be that starting quarterback that long. So I'm, I'm gonna go Eagles. And I love Kyler Murray. I love that's saying a lot. I love Kyler Murray, but I'm gonna go Eagles. I'm gonna go Eagles. Yeah, that's where we yeah. differ. I hate Kyler Murray. I will never choose a <laughs> Kyler Murray led team. I just, I, he's too much of a crybaby for me. And the Eagles proved to us last week that they can get hit in the mouth and be down and, and make that comeback. And yeah, in the second half, like I'm going with the Eagles. Hmm. Yeah, um, this is an interesting game, y'all. The Cardinals are um, a lot of an interesting team. When do DeAndre Hopkins come back, fellas? That's my next question. But um, whenever he comes back, I'll be very interested in um, picking this team. Um, just quickly, y'all, I'm, I'm just looking at some notes before I make my pick because I'm a little confused on this one. Um, Frank Knox has got the Bears. He got the Patriots, y'all. He got the Saints. He, he got the Saints in an upset. He say no way the Jets beat the Dolphins. And then he stated with divorce news looming about Brady, he's going to try to take it out somewhere. And so he'll get a monster game here. And so, yes. Um, and so with this one, um, I think this is a trap game for the Eagles, uh, and, but I'm going to go with the Eagles um, just because they're 4-0, and I think they're one of the best teams in football. Um, I don't think they're the best team in football. I think the best team in football might be Kansas City. But um, I'm going to go with the Eagles because I think the Eagles, they're on a mission. They're on a mission. But I think the Cardinals do give them a run for their money, though. And so, any news about Hopkins, uh, Jonathan? Um, he will return in week seven. Oh, okay, two weeks out. Okay, two weeks out. Okay, gotcha. In that case, yeah, definitely Eagles. Um, and so, in now, uh, your favorite team, man, Dallas. Uh, they going up to the Rams, who two and two. Check this out, man. If the Cowboys beat the Rams, the Rams will be definitely on a Super Bowl hangover. They'll be two and three. So, what happens? I got the Rams. I got a Rams helmet tatted on my arm. Is I got the Rams. Uh, I, the Cowboys. I'll, I'll, I'll pick a bunch of the teams of kids before I pick the Cowboys. Uh, I, I got the Rams. <laughs> yeah, Not the you Cowboys. Get Cowboys. Until they start giving Ezekiel Elliott less run, uh, less play time, and making Pollard more of a priority. Feature back. Yeah. The Cowboys, they're just wasting talent right now. I'm picking the Rams with this one. I think Cooper Rush finally gets his first loss. No, I think yeah. Dak is, is Dak returning tomorrow. Is it a, a status? Because I thought he was supposed to have been returning against the Rams. Um, I know he was trying to. He was trying to, right. I know he was trying to. And so um, if he comes tomorrow, this is – this is going to be a shootout, baby. This is going to be a game. Um, but on the other hand, if he's not playing, then I'm going to go with the Rams at home. And so, um, yeah, if you could, Jonathan, let me know um, his status. But um, I believe um, Frank, by the way, stated flat Eagles 5-5-0. Five, five, and, oh. um, and so, yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams um, because I, I think Cooper Rush is playing tomorrow. And so, meanwhile, um, in the Bengals at the Ravens, bro, this is a good game. And I'm surprised both of these teams are two and two. Yeah, divisional game. This is going to be a dog fight. Um, tough game. You know, the Bengals, they've been kind of up and down this year, having kind of struggles on the O-line with this new O-line. Um, the Ravens, they kind of started off hiding. 
gave up a game. What was that last week? And uh, I think Marcus yep. Peterson, the coach, got into Buffalo. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was surprised that Buffalo came back. Um, tough tough divisional game. Mm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bengals. I'm gonna go Bengals. The Bengals never let you down, do they? Every time you pick the Bengals, they win. Yeah? Yeah. It's been that same way since the playoffs last year. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, who you got, bro? Um, real quick, Dak Prescott. He was trying to return this week, but I guess coaches and everything said they're just gonna hold off on on him yeah. bringing him back early. Right. Um, I'm gonna go with the Ravens with this one because the way they let that game get away last week. I don't think that they're too happy about it, obviously. I think they're just come going to come out firing on all cylinders. I think they really hit it hard this week during practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got the Ravens at home, too, in a close one. Um, this is going to be a really good game, though. I want to watch this one. And it's Sunday night, too, so everybody get a chance to watch it. Yeah, um, yeah. Monday night, the Raiders, one and three at the Chiefs. Um, do the Raiders begin to bounce back their season uh, in, uh, but they, they, they're in Kansas City. So what, what you think? Mahomes in a blowout. He threw for like 500 yards and five touchdowns. Hmm. And Jonathan, what about you? I, I definitely second that. I, I don't think Mahomes right now is playing around and he's anything to be messed with. Yeah. I mean, he they finds look, a way to score. They look hungry right now. Yeah, yeah. And – um. The Raiders, um, they barely squeaked out a, game, a win last week, man. Um, you know, played a bad Denver team uh, with a terrible offense. And they, Russell Wilson was – look, that was his best game of the season, y'all, against the Raiders, Russell Wilson. That was their offense best mm -hmm. game of the season. But I don't know if that's enough against Kansas City. Um, I'm going to go with the Chiefs, unless the Chiefs just lay a pure egg. But I don't see that happening. Um, so I got the Chiefs. Um, the so world – uh, we thank you all for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, Frank Knox has additionally stated Chiefs, 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 best team in the league. So we thank you all for tuning in with us this morning on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. And as we do every weekend before we head into the weekend, we ask um, you, Jonathan, our guests, as well as uh, Ian and Jamar, um, any final thoughts or shout outs as we head into the weekend? Um, just everybody stay safe. Um... I appreciate you guys for letting me back on and I hope you guys have a great Thank week. you for coming back on with us. Of course. Yeah, appreciate you. And then, any final thoughts or shout outs, bro, as we head into the weekend? Uh, shout out to Alma Mater, Morgan Park. Uh, one homecoming last night, 52 to zero. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, they had, they all had the new all black jerseys on last night. They looked pretty good. Shout out, shout out to the Mustangs, man. Yeah, and, and just the FYI, Jonathan, uh, the head coach, man, he played with us. Um, he's a couple years ahead of us. Um, now he got that program turned all the way around. Um, these guys got Division One offers all over the place at Morgan Park. Um, shout out to Chris James and the Morgan Park Mustangs, seven and zero. And in if they win state, I'm a cry. Yeah, big game next week against Simeon. I'm real excited to hear big about one. it. That's a rival on the boss, Jonathan. We don't like each other, semi on Morgan Park. So it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a really big game. And so, both, both yes. Teams, that's going to be a big game next week. Yeah, what is semi on record? They 7-0 and too? Yeah, 7-0, and yep. Woo, it's going down, baby. Yeah, um, yeah, so the early morning sports talk podcast will definitely be talking about that next Saturday as well. And so, bro, we thank you all for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, we'll try to do better next time. Uh, we got a little ADHD moment. We wanted to do our <laughs> typical hour, 30 minutes, but we went 15 minutes over time this morning, um, and that's all right. And so we thank you all for tuning in with us this morning on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. May you all have a blessed weekend. Take care and peace. Peace.